As a voiceover talent here at Skillcapped, I've grown accustomed to being the bearer of bad news. I'm always the villain. Blizzard introduces Azerite, and suddenly the comment section is full of marksman hunters ready to shoot the messenger, like I'm the one to blame. So I'm both delighted and relieved to say that I have so much good news for you today. I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes talking about all the stuff that you don't need to do, and all the feedback that Blizzard has taken on board. Like here, check out all these expensive looking menus. What is all this? I have no idea and that just makes me so so happy so today at skillcap we want you to enjoy this moment with us but don't put away the notepad because there are some exciting new systems that you need to know about including a whole separate set of pvp gear from world pvp However, unlike Shadowlands, with all the changes to PvP scaling and how accessible PvP gear is now, you won't be able to just stop people by quickly outgearing them in Dragonflight. So just being decked out in the best gear might make you look and feel fancy, but it still won't be enough. Luckily for you, we've spent the last few months working with some of the highest rated players in the world to create the very best guides for every class and spec, including Evoker, so you can dominate arena and solo shuffle in the new expansion. From damage to defensive play and crowd control, to even the most advanced tips out there, you won't be disappointed. And the best part is, you're guaranteed to climb 400 plus rating when actively using Skillcapped, so be sure to check us out after this to make your shiny new gear actually useful. Special discount link is in the description below. If you have read anything about PvP and Dragonflight, you will have heard about this, so say it with me. WAD style gearing is back, baby! For the uninitiated, let's quickly blaze through what we mean by WAD style gearing. Warlords of Draenor introduced a dynamic item level to PvP gear. The concept is the same as in Shadowlands. Each item had its real item level, and then a second item level that would activate whenever the player entered PvP. What made the system impactful was the actual value that the gear scaled to. PvP gear in WAD would scale to be above that of the very best PvE gear. This made it almost impossible for PvE gear to make an impact in the competitive PvP meta. Despite being a popular solution, WAD style gearing was ditched after a single expansion. Every expansion since has involved another major overhaul to PvP gear. Each season of Shadowlands had a massive power gap between the top and bottom end of the gear curve. This gap created a massive imbalance, and gearing was gated behind a grueling grind. This system felt like something from Dante's Inferno, but at least it was on theme for Shadowlands, I suppose. On its face, Dragonflight's PvP gear system is identical to the final season of Shadowlands. There are two tiers of currency. Honor comes primarily from non-rated PvP, such as Battlegrounds, and Conquest is mainly earned from rated PvP, such as Arena. Conquest is used to buy epic items that have an upgrade track that is limited by your highest rating. But the crucial distinction is that the scaling behaves like it did in WAD. The number is not simply 13 item levels above the base level, but a fixed value, a big one. When you buy an item, its PvP eye level is already at its max. The upgrade path is only relevant in PvE content. For Season 1, all Conquest gear scales to item level 424. This is on par with the highest level of PvE loot. So you buy any Conquest piece, and that item is immediately the strongest item you can obtain for the purposes of PvP. This is an enormous quality of life and game balance improvement for the game. This is what we wanted to see from Dragonflight, and what we expected to see when Holinka declared that WAD style gear would make a return. The item level span of PvP gear has also been compressed quite a bit. At rank 1, Aspirin's item would scale to 265 item level in Season 4 of Shadowlands, and Gladiator gear would go as high as 311. That is almost 50 item level and averages out to around 40% more budget on the Gladiator gear. And that is excluding borrowed power systems. In Dragonflight, the difference between Honor and Conquest gear with that same math is a mere 9%. All of this is to say that PvP ought to feel dramatically more balanced and more approachable, and as a result, you are allowed to skip PvE content that doesn't interest you. The Honor gear scales above the majority of PvE gear, the Conquest gear scales above essentially all of it. It should be noted though that Blizzard really has given us WAD style gearing. In PvE, the base item level of these items is garbage. If you intend to ever leave the city for any reason, you will still want to upgrade your gear. Even at the elite level, the PvE item level is unremarkable. If you're the kind of player who likes to jump between PvE and PvP, you will want two completely separate sets of gear. So now that we know how the system works and have painted a broad picture, let's get into the nitty gritty. Dragonflight professions have seen a massive overhaul and are a lot more complex than previous versions. Normally this would be accompanied by a 200 haste buff or something to make players look at the expensive menus, but nothing like that exists. There are some nebulous bonuses that even the raiders don't know what to make of, but everything we have seen is not usable at all in PvP. Professions are able to craft green quality PvP gear, which behaves in the same way as the other PvP gear we've discussed. At 398 item level, it's actually very respectable. It is on par with the items that drop from the end of a level 15 keystone. 
In terms of enchants, Dragonflight has some old favorites with a new twist. Spell thread and armor kits are back in a slightly different form. There is an emphasis on tertiary stats on the enchants in Dragonflight. For bracers, you have the option of either 150 speed, avoidance, or leech. There's typically confusion around whether these effects apply in arena. As you can see from our beta testing, these enchants currently give their full benefit rated PvP. Beyond that, the usual suspects are all here. Secondary enchants for rings, and all stats enchant for your chest, a lot of weapons enchants that you'll probably ignore in favor of the raw stat proc, everything you've come to expect. An interesting new enhancement is the tiered medallion setting. This is similar to the eternal belt buckle from Wrath of the Lich King. It can add a certain number of sockets to your neck piece. The number of sockets is dependent on the quality of the setting itself, so three gold diamonds gives you three sockets. But what do you put in those three sockets? Well, gems, obviously. Dragonflight introduces a bunch of new gems, including the return of mixed gems. Different combinations of secondary stats are available with this method, and these mixed gems have a total sum of 17% more stats than their equivalent pure cut. This is super interesting. Between this incentive to mix gems and the fact that we will be soft capped on versatility very quickly in Dragonflights, we would not be surprised if players experiment with these mixed gems and explore a world beyond mindlessly slamming versatility. So, we did tell a little lie. There is one expensive menu Blizzard really wants you to see, and it is crafting orders. The crafting order system is a whole separate system similar to the auction house. It is like Fiverr or Upwork for crafting and WoW. Players like you or I acquire the materials and can then request to have certain items crafted. There are reasons why Blizzard did this, but you don't need to care. What you should care about though is our 400 rating guarantee. That's right, we're so confident you'll improve that if you don't, you get your money back. Simple as that. Join us today with the special discount link in the description below. Anyway. In order to make you at least look at crafting orders, Blizzard has dangled a best in slot item in front of you. Each armor type has an item that offers an additional 5% reduction to the duration of CC effects. The profession system is very complex, but almost all of the moving parts don't apply to us thanks to PvP scaling. You simply acquire these items, make an order, and offer a reasonable commission to incentivize a crafter, and BAM, they will craft you abyss item. But you're rightfully skeptical there's going to be a catch, and it's probably in the mats, so let's go through them. Firstly, the Spark of Ingenuity. This thing is a bit odd. Blizzard wants them to be rare, but not oppressive. You're guaranteed to get your first Spark of Ingenuity from unlocking the Engine of Innovation, which we'll discuss later on. For now, this means that this Spark is essentially free for performing basic housekeeping that you would do anyway. Primal Chaos is rewarded from any major activity, including Contender's Strong Boxes. So when you win an arena match and get one of these boxes, there's a chance that a primal chaos will be in it. There are decent odds that by the time you're watching this, you already have enough to make your item. The final materials are just standard crafting material, in this case, ore. These have a quality system to them which can look daunting, but since the PvP item level is fixed at 424, we don't care about the quality of the item, so we can buy the cheap nasty ore that no one else wants. So collect your free spark of ingenuity, passively farm up Primal Chaos by playing World of Warcraft Dragonflight, visit the auction house to buy the mats that are on clearance, and go to the crafting order guy, pick the item and pay a commission to another player to put everything together. And just like that, your boots or cloth belt are sorted for the whole season. Each armor type has access to two of these in furious PvP pieces. The first is the 5% CC reduction that we've been focusing on. The second is a proc that is unique to each armor type. These are a solid way to acquire another 424 piece, but the extra effects are nowhere near as strong as the 5% CC reduction. Crafting these will require a second spark, which will be given to you for free by the Engine of Innovation on the 12th of December. Jewel crafters can also craft a similar item through crafting orders, the Primalist Gems, which are improved versions of the standard gems with a bunch of primary stat on them. The difference between the best and worst version of this gem is 40%. But since we're talking about a difference of 22 intellect on a character that will have close to 10,000 in Season 1, you have our permission to go cheap on this thing if gold is tight. World content is a key theme of Dragonflight. As part of this focus on world content, a whole extra system has been introduced to War Mode. In recent years, Blizzard has tried numerous times to encourage world PvP, but nothing quite like this. The world PvP gear on offer is a whole separate set of PvP gear, and best in slot pieces can absolutely be found in this list. Like the normal PvP gear we just discussed, this Drake Breaker set has two tiers. There are basic blue pieces, and these can be upgraded into epic pieces. These tiers are both three item level below 
below the standard PvP gear. So in PvP, the blue quality Drake Breaker gear is 408 item level, and the epic is 421 item level, only 3 down from the Conquest gear. What makes them powerful is their potential for unique stack combinations. Using an unholy DK as an example, if you wanted to stack Mastery, the Conquest vendor does not offer Mastery vs. Plate shoulders, only Haste or Crit. By contrast, the Drake Breaker guy is more than happy to sell you an epic pair of Mastery vs. Shoulders. Between tier sets and the secondary stats offered by the Drake Breaker gear, there are a lot of possible gear setups that a spec could run. For certain specs, this epic Drake Breaker gear will certainly be appearing on best in slot lists. These items are bought off of a vendor and require two currencies, Bloody Tokens and Trophies of Strife. Bloody Tokens are rewards for completing PvP-oriented world quests that are available only in War Mode. This will provide you with the ability to purchase the blue 408 gear. This gear can then be further enhanced into epic quality through Trophies of Strife. We've yet to see precisely how these will work, so here's our best prediction based on what we've been able to find. A weekly quest similar to the War Mode quest from Zareth Mortis will encourage you to go and hang out in a single zone in War Mode. This weekly quest will reward a certain number of trophies of strife. At time of writing, the adventure guide tells us to expect four trophies. At one point in the beta, two weekly quests were given, so we're predicting a total of eight trophies a week will be available from weekly quests. Regardless of the details, it is clear that this world PvP system is not some minor feature, but a truly legitimate form of character progression in PvP. Shadowlands veterans will be familiar with the Great Vault. The Vault is sticking around, but due to the changes we have discussed, its impact will be reduced quite a bit. For the uninitiated, the Great Vault is a weekly reward that is offered to players based on the group activities they participated in the week prior. The player gets to choose a single item, where the number of choices and the power of the item is dictated by the difficulty and quantity of the content. For PvP, you simply have to earn honor from rated PvP to unlock up to three choices. With the WAD style gearing, your rating does not impact the gear's value in PvP, so this is a choice of one of up to three conquest items each week. In the past, Filling the vault could be a bit of a pain, but with solo shuffle, it's much less of a grind. This is the one gearing element of Dragonflight that is on a ticking clock. If nothing else, the one goal you want to achieve each week is to earn at least some slots in your vault. If you played Shadowlands at all in 2022, you will be familiar with the Creation Catalyst. It was a system that allowed you to take a piece of gear and transform it into an item from a different set, and viable pieces were turned into tier set pieces. The return of tier sets was a huge feature in 9.2. These bonuses were highly influential and essentially mandatory. This aggravated a lot of existing problems we've already discussed, the potency of the Great Vault, the awful grind to even feel like you could begin to PvP. The Creation Catalyst and tier sets are sticking around in Dragonflight. This is rightfully a reason to be nervous, but we want to spend the final moments of this video discussing the engine and tier sets to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, because it's not the same situation as 9.2. In 9.2, the tier sets deliberately impacted the kinds of talents and legendaries that players used. The designers used them to stir up the sediment on an otherwise settled meta. This meant that it encouraged, if not demanded, that you take certain talents. But in Dragonflight, the core promise of the new talent system is to offer you freedom of personal expression, to let you make a build that is self-contained and is yours. Blizzard would be undermining that idea if they put their thumb on the scales with a highly potent tier set. So the tier sets in Season 1 of Dragonflight are much less impactful. If we look at something like the Holy Paladin or Elemental Shaman bonuses, these are useful but they aren't game changing. Remember how the 9.2 tier set catapulted Fury Warriors and Outlaw Rogues into being the strongest DPS in the game almost overnight? I don't know man, I don't see the Destruction tier set having the same impact. However, I will admit that we are kinda cherry picking here. Some bonuses do absolutely spook us in PvP. For instance, Demonology sports the potential for a very scary Demon Bolt bang, similar to what they've done to us before. And would you look at that, their two piece bonus is straight up 20% more demon bolt damage. The Balanced Druid 4-piece bonus is actually really powerful, and Moonkins in PvE are relying on it to fix the awkwardness that Dragonflight introduced to the Moonkin playstyle. Survival's tier set bonus is enormous value in the context of PvP. Almost all their damage in their burst window comes from Mongoose Bite, so this bonus is insane. However, the Dragonflight sets have quite varying levels of versatility. Some are high, others are very low. The Engine of Innovation is unlocked as part of a quest line that took us about 7 minutes to unlock. The quest line requires completion of the Dragonflight campaign. Bringing all this together, here is our vision for what Dragonflight PvP gearing will look like. You arrive on the Dragon Isle and get to max level. This will take between 4 to 8 hours depending on how powerful you are. If you want to have an easy time, you're going to hit up the auction house and buy a set of 398 crafted PvP gear. 
The most valuable honor gear to acquire early is a pair of aspirant trinkets to access the gladiator's distinction set bonus. Pick up your weekly world PvP quest, and between games, you want to work through the relevant world quests. When it comes to spending the trophies of strife, there are two approaches. Either consider what is best for the short term or what is best for the long term. In the short term, a high impact item like a weapon is a wise use of your trophies, but if you want to think long term, you will want to think about what item will stick around for the entire season. Think back to the unholy DK example we gave before. Beyond that, you will want to prioritize a blue quality PvP weapon which has no crafted equivalent. By this stage, you should have a full set of crafted PvP gear supplemented with two honor trinkets and either an honor weapon or drake breaker weapon. This should give you a baseline of approximately 401 item level. With Season 1 of Dragonflight underway, you will want to make sure you are filling out your Great Vault slots every week. No matter your gear, an item from the Great Vault is the one essential thing you need to do each week. Go into solo shuffle and get beaten up, you will be rewarded with this loot. Doing all of this will build up your supply of Primal Chaos and crafting materials until you're able to place a crafting order for your first Infurious PvP piece. After that, it's a matter of getting lucky with your vault, spending your conquest points wisely, and getting your stuffed gem and enchanted. And if you want a one-stop shop to dominate next expansion, we got you covered at skillcap.com. Our class courses will teach you everything you need to know to get instantly started in Dragonflight. If you have a rating goal you want to achieve this expansion, we got you covered with the data to prove it, which is why we are able to offer you a rating gain guarantee, giving you a full refund if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our site. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users in the best learning experience WoW has to offer. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.